ีวิตที่นักชาOf the Spirit is given to each one for the profit 
of all. For the one is given the word of wisdom to the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. And to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirit. To another, different kind of to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one and as many members, but all the members of that one body decay, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Fourteenth and last, for in fact the body is not one member, but many. Father God, we just want to thank you for the reading of the word, Holy Spirit. Lord God, as I'm about to minister your word, Holy Spirit, I pray, Father God, that I decrease, Father God, and that you increase, Father God. Let your word be watered, Father God. Let your word be multiplied to our hearts and our minds, Father God. Father God, we are here to partake at your table, Father God. Speak through me, Father God, with my mind, with my heart, with my soul, Father God, just to minister to me, Father God. And Lord, let your name be glorified. Let your name be praised, Father God. We worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Just such a privilege to see you all today in the house of God. Amen. We are blessed to have you with us worshiping today. And now I can see many generations in the house which I've met. Uh, Grace's mom, Phil's mom and dad, and um, other members, relatives and friends. We greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And we're all happy to have you at Restoration Church with us worshiping over here this morning. And as we well, as you have seen, there's a uniqueness but diversity this morning, but there's a one common approach in that we're all here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. We are uniquely different in our cultures, in our practices, but we are one in Christ. Amen? Amen. So spiritual gifts are divided as gracious endowments, leading to miraculous results. And these all came by the extraordinary influence of the Holy Spirit. As we know, it is the Holy Spirit that gives us new gifts. Jesus made it plain so that when the Holy Spirit of the helper will come, he will testify of me. And he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine. And declare to you in John chapter 16, verse 14. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not to promote himself or any man, but to glorify and represent Jesus. We can therefore trust that the true ministry of the Holy Spirit will be according to the nature and the calling of Jesus Christ. Paul lays down a broad principle of discerning matters regarding spiritual gifts. We need to judge things by how they relate. To Jesus Christ. When we see someone operating the gift of the Holy Spirit, we, are, we ask ourselves, does it glorify Jesus Christ? Or does it promote self? Is it about me or is it about God? Because one central thing in our walk as Christians is whatever gift we have it is all to the glory of God. If God is not being glorified in your life, then we are not true Christians. Because everything that we do should all lead to the glory of God. Because he says he will not share his glory with another. So consider yourself unique when you are given that gift to represent the body of Christ. And the true mark of any Christian is that it should line up with the word of God. If it is not according to scripture, it is not coming from God. Hallelujah. And if the gift is not represented of the gift and the calling or the nature of Christ, then it is not representing the true Christians. So it talks about every man in verse 7. 
There are those who are paganless away from the body of Christ that are idle, that have nothing to say, no message, no good news. So once you see a Christian that wants to go to a church, you must always hear the good news of Christ. Because Christ is brings the good news. We may go through tests, we may go through trials, but know at the end of all the tests and the trials that Christ will come through and it will be well worth it. Amen. The question we ask ourselves today, and I ask myself that question daily, is Jesus Lord of my life? How much am I committed to him? You know, how much do I value him? How much do I worship him? What are the things that give priority in my life? The things that give priority in your life is your work, is your Lord and your idol. So if you are giving all that time to your work, not having time to pray, not having time to worship, if you are giving time to that relationship, you will spend so much hours on the phone talking to that wife, that husband, that work, your girlfriend, and you don't have time to pray, then those are your idols. That's who you worship, that's what's important to you. Because if something is important to you, you make time for it, and you value it. And as couples, as husband and wife, as family, Christ always has to be at the center of all that you do. When you get up in the morning, just commit to your day to God and just give it. Because when you when you get up in the morning and you dedicate your life to Christ, you are sending Christ ahead of you to pave the way. Because as I said, the enemy is like a world lion seeking to devour. So don't don't think for one minute that the enemy is resting. But we as Christians, we as children of God, we have to pray. And if ever we need to pray, it is now. Amen. It is now we need to pray and we need to go down on our knees and intercede. Because of those unsaved family members are depending on you and I to pray. Because I'm here today because of prayers that have gone up before me. Amen? Amen. And you know, some of you may have heard my testimony before, but I just like to share because when I'm worshiping God, I know why. I am worshiping because of what he has done for me. Three times before, I've been in situations where I could have been born, but for the grace of God. When I was just a child, this car that you see here, I was running across the road, a truck knocked me down. I'm still here today. Um, another time, I was driving on the motorway. I was in the past, I was in the, I was in the left lane. And I fell asleep, and before I know it, it was a central reservation that woke me up. But God, another time in 2007, I was in Cyprus, I was running. And I was on the side, I got about 15 stars in my head. And I went, and I, and I was trying to duck underneath it. But I did duck early enough, and I was not called cool. But it was a friend that was there, and tell me I'm going to the hospital. So the trials that we are going through, is for a reason and it's for a test. But when you go through those trials, let it not be about you, but let it be to the glory of God or God or Son. God is free because God has protected you, God has kept you today. But just keep on worshiping and don't and boast about God. Pick him up. Pick him up wherever you go. Do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed to call yourself a Christian. Amen. Make him the Lord of all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, I, and there are many false prophets out there today. As in Matthew chapter 17, verse 22, 10. Many, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did you not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us the wisdom. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us the grace. So I say to you today, if you don't know God, let this be an invitation to come and know today. There's a great power in knowing Him. There's a great anointing in knowing There's great protection. Amen? Because in Psalm 91, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will give thee charge over, I will give you my angels charge over thee. Let's you dash your foot against a stone. So there's protection. There's peace in God. 
but you have to be a disciple. You have to be a child of him. Amen? Just like the royal family, Ariel and William, wherever they go, they've got their bodyguards. So we've got the greatest bodyguard. We've got the greatest savior. We've got the greatest warrior because when Christ comes in and he gives his angels, there are angels assigned to you and that wherever you go, you are protected, you are covered. But you have to be come under their banner and accept him as the Lord and Savior. Amen. And we have to be trained by the Holy Spirit when we come as Christians. Our walk has to be the walk of Christ. We have to say meaning and live it. Jesus has to be Lord of my life. You have to say to yourself, Jesus run my life. No matter how small it is, he has to run your life. When you're cooking, say, Lord, help me to cook the best meal ever. When you're applying for the job, say, Lord, go before me and pay the way because there can be some cantankerous employees. But for the grace of God, you can smile in the midst of the storm. When you're going to the exams, send God for and say, God, bring to my memory everything that I've studied. When you're going out in a relationship, say, God, if this relationship is not of me, then take it away from me. Because not every relationship is good for you. Not every friend is good for you. And sometimes as you go higher and deeper in God, friends will fall away. Because they are not meant to you. Not everyone will go where you are going. And not everybody will celebrate your success. But we have to be discerning of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And it's important to know as well that when I finish, when you fall short, we have to repent and seek his forgiveness. Because we are mere mortals. The Adamic nature is in us. And we make mistakes. Do not be that pious Christian that you think that you have made it all. And you don't need Christ. Daily, daily. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Daily. Daily you have to worship. Daily you have to read the word. And let the word speak to us. And when we, when the word speaks to us, it convicts us. And we have to get on our knees and repent. And Christ, when we repent, is a loving heart. When we come, he can be with the of us all. And as we are diverse, we see things from different natures. We see things differently. But we have to remember that at the end of it all, it is all about Christ. Amen? Everything that we, everything that we do should be about Christ. Because God is sovereign over everything. And it says, one God, one Father, one Holy Spirit. And their purpose is to build and guide the church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 says, So if everything do to others, what will have them do to you? For this sum of the law of the prophets. Treat someone with love. Treat someone with kindness. Be someone of grace. Be someone of humility. It says, esteem others above ourselves. Because love, love covers a multitude of sin. You know, for those of us who have been in a relationship, you know, when we are in family members, when that person loves us, when that person creates that warm and atmosphere, it's such a joy to be in that presence. And that is the mark of Christian that we should carry. That when somebody comes into your, your space, because it is a private space, but when somebody enters that space, let them leave feeling refreshed. Let them re feel rejuvenated and say, I want to go back to that place. Or I want what you have. I want what, what, what I want the grace. I want the smile. And then when they say that you can take them, it is God that brings everything. It is God my provider because trials come and trials go. But God, I know that God will come through for me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And it goes on in, in Matthew chapter 7 says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. 
A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Amen? So what I like about this Restoration Church is that there's a loving atmosphere within this church. You know, when, when, when we just came into this church, you know, it was just such a warm presence. You can just feel the love of God in this church. And, you know, sometimes people can fake it. And we know it, but when you come into this church, everybody gives you that warm welcome. And it can only be to the glory of God that is in this place. Amen? But as we can see, there are diversities of cultures. But within our diversities, we come together and we celebrate Christ. Because Christ, wherever language we speak, it is still Christ. Amen? So just watch out for division. Because if you're, if you're, if you're creating division, then you're not one in Christ. Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit works together. Hand in hand says, my Father and I are one. So we have to create that one nest in atmosphere. And in just the pride, in just the unity is pride. Pride. You know, it says, he that exalted himself shall be abased. Let us not exalt ourselves. Let, let not pride be in us. Because we have our own wants, we have our own needs. But at the end of it all, it should be all about giving glory to God. And for the betterment of mankind and for the betterment of the church. Amen? And sometimes we have to let our pride know that it's not about us, but it's about God. Because when we think about Joseph, how much he was tested, how much he was tried, and well, God, this is too much for me. You know, I can't do this anymore, but he saved a nation. Amen? So, so it is with us that sometimes we have to give up what we. Our, our needs and our wants, sometimes we have to give it up so that Christ can be made manifest in our lives. You know, sometimes when you have something with the food, just share it with your neighbor. You know, show Christ's love in your community. Amen? And don't be the one that causes shame to someone else. Don't be the one that, you know, sometimes it is so easy to be right. Sometimes, you know, you, have, you get that sense of pride when you are right and someone is wrong. And sometimes you try to eliminate them publicly. But beware of, of harming a child of the king. You know, if you remember Saul on the Damascus road, Saul was persecuting the Christian, but he said, Saul, Saul, why don't persecute this not me? So when you are a child of the king, God is protecting you. So if you hurt the child of the king, God will 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 have will, will, will pay his vengeance. Amen. We have to care for one another. Have a heart for and sympathy with our fellow members. Because though we be different, we are one in Christ. Amen. Amen. Because we know whatever the situation and temptation is, we have to keep on fighting. Because the Lord is there to assist us and to guide us along our path. In Psalm 46 it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. So whatever the situation you're going through, because of your, your culture, because of your race, just remember God is there to help you in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quit their serving. There is a river whose stream made glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high God dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. God will help her at the break of day in the morning. In chapter 7, it can be our, our, our motto. The Lord Almighty is with us. Or you can substitute and say, the Lord Almighty is with me. Wherever you go, the Lord is with you. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And when you see someone, just say to them, come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see the dry places that he has made water in my life. Because we all have a testimony. And in verse 10 it says, be still and know that. Be still. 
Because God doesn't need our help. All he needs for us to do is just to worship him and praise him. Because he said, vengeance is mine. I will pay. And the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord. And there's a beauty when we are united. In our Bible study, which we had on Thursday, they were reflecting on Acts chapter 2. And we spoke about unity as well. And it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, on one accord. And because they were on one accord, and because of was unity, it says, suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Oh, what a beautiful sight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and the Spirit enabled them. So when they come together as church and believe it and pray, demons will tremble, hearts will shake, will, will quake. Amen? Sickness will go, diseases will flee. Amen? Amen. And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and they just begin to preach. But there are those who, who weren't saved. And for those who are, who are here today, if you are not saved, the scripture is saying, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus. Christ asked Jesus Christ forgiveness of your sin. So if you want the Holy Spirit to work in your life and live the victorious life, you have to come and accept him as Lord and Savior. So I invite you today, if you are here and you don't know Christ, the invitation is here. Come. Experience the joy. Come, experience the glory. Come, experience the miracle from Christ. Because all of us here today, we're all miracles. Because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Because the DNA you're here, none of us have the same fingerprints. How oh, oh, beautiful and how oh, majestic is that? But we're all one in Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So today, as I close, I just invite you, as you let the Holy Spirit guide you and be your pilot, the guide of your life, just be that person who has a tender heart to really care. Be the one who has a quick eye to see the needs of others. Be the one who has a, who has a quick foot to get to the needy. A loving face to cheer others and bless them. A firm foot so that you not fall yourself. A firm foot that has anchored in the word of God. A strong hand to grip the needy with. And a bent back to reach a man and woman who is lost of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I just invite us to stand. Hallelujah. Though we are different, though we are your unique and your fearfully and wonderful name, though we are born in Christ, as we begin to pray, as we begin to lift up God, and God coming today, and wash you with the word. Father, we just want to bless you. Father, we just want to exalt you. Father, now we just want to lift up. I thank you, Lord, for the many lives that are gathered here today. I thank you, Lord, for the many lives on your hearing under the sound of my voice that are here today, Father God, to meet with you. Our needs are different, Father God. Our, our lives are different, Father God. Our journeys, our trajectory, God, is different. We're on different walks in our spiritual journey, Father God. Some of us are seasoned Christians, Father God. Some of us are starting. Just starting on the journey. But wherever you are, Father God, you can meet us at our point of need, Father God. We come here, Father God, to receive grace and mercy in time of need, Father God. We all need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I decree and I declare that every need will be met today, Father God. Every heart, Father God, will be healed today. Every desire, Father God, will be met, Father God, because, Lord, you are a God that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, Father God. Every eye will see you today, Father God. I am lifted up, and your train will fill the temple. 
The glory of God will come down and be made manifest in us today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We call upon the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, yes. Jesus. Jesus in the home. Jesus in the workplace. Yes. Jesus in the car. Jesus in the bus. Yes. Jesus in the kitchen. Jesus in the bathroom, wherever you are, Father God. Lord, and as you come in, O oh God, change our hearts. Change our minds, Father God. Change our thoughts, Father God. Create in us, Holy Spirit, a clean up and renew our right spirit within us, O oh God. Let the mind of Christ be in us, Father God. And Lord God, I have a to say, no matter what the storm code may rock, the ship of mine, the light of my Savior will guide me on because I find rest in the eye of the storm, Father God. Whether it be a storm in our finances, Father God, we declare it done in the name of Jesus. Whether it be a storm in our health, we declare it done in the name of Jesus. Whether it be a storm in the world, we declare it done in the name of Jesus. A storm in our relationship, we declare it done in the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous come into it and they are saved. We find rest in you today, Father God. Because you are the God of the impossible. Because as you said, what is impossible for men is possible for you. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And we commit everything to you, Father God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And our God, we will save you. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Wow. Oh, are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? 